instead of me giving you the domain and asking you to do the input output table and find the range, I give you both. I give you the domain, I give you the range, but now you need to give me the equation. And the equation is gonna be written in the form y equals, y equals. I wrote the word equation here. They may not use that word on the uh, MSTAP or the PSAT. They might say write a rule. And a lot of you are like, what do you mean write a rule? A rule is basically that all of the y values are the x values plus three, that's a rule. So a rule is a kind of a fancy way of saying equation. So, yeah, oh, you got it? All right, before we even, I know some of you looked at it already and you're like, well, duh. Technically, if you know how to go one way, then we're kind of just working backwards. And so for some of you, you looked at it and I bet you right away you knew what the rule was. Anybody know? Go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, both of you said I looked right at you. So are all of these, and this is what I would do if I were you. I would look to see from the X to the Y if the same thing happens to all of them. And in this case, it does. Okay, so you know right away that this is a times five. Zero times five is zero. One times five. Two times five is 10. Three times five is 15 and so on, right? So doesn't that mean that all the Y values are equal to five times the X values? So instead of Y equals X, Y equals 5x, or like on the front, y equals 2x, right? Okay, that was pretty simple. How about the next one? See if you can take a um, look at what that one would be. Evan? It would be um, y equals 3x. Good. So he looked at 3 and 9, 5 and 15, 6 and 18. All of these are just being multiplied by 3 which means the rule is that all of the y values are equal to, this time, 3 times the x values, right? That's pretty simple, okay? Now, if you're looking at this next one, trying to figure out what got multiplied, you're going to be looking a long time, okay? Because nothing got multiplied, but something did get what? Added, right? So what do you got, Jordan? <laughs> Good. So he looked and said, well, there's no, like, nothing getting multiplied, but if I do add 2 to each of these x values, Dominic, please, I'll get the y values, right? So in this case, y is equal to not anything in front of the x, because nothing got multiplied, something got added, All right, correct? So could you kind of take a look at this next example and see what that one would be, Riley? Yes. So in this case, all of the y values are equal to the x values, but minus 1. OK, yes. Oh, I did, didn't I? Sorry, I'm chatting and trying to. Um, OK, thank you. OK, good. Good fix. Yes, Dominic. Oh, okay, we're gonna hold off on the next one for a minute because here's what I want to show you otherwise. For these ones here that contain a point zero, zero, if you're looking and looking and looking and for some reason you just cannot for the life of you figure out what this little factor is, do you remember last year Mr. Meeks or Mr. Seville, they taught you delta Y over delta X? Usually kids will grow and they'll go, oh, I remember that. Delta Y divided by delta x means the change in y divided by the change in x. And the change means difference. So you're going to be able to fall back on this. So I'm going to find, do you remember doing this? Putting little lines here. What are the y values changing by? 5. They're going up by 5. From 10 to 15, from 15 to 20. What are the x values changing by? one and so when if you are ever stuck ever you can just find what the y is changing by what's the x is changing by and then take the change in the y which is five and divide it by the change in the x which is one and that will give you 
the rate of change. Okay, let me show you here. So what is this changing by? From nine to five, it went up six. Or nine to 15, sorry. From 15 to eight, it went up what? Ooh, I know what you're thinking. Well, wait, this one all up by fives. Why are these different? Keep going. 18 to 24 went up. And 24 went up. Okay, what was the change from this x to this x? Two. What is six divided by two? Three. What did this go up? One. What is three divided by one? Three. Be very careful because look right here. It's not x over y. So don't take this number and put it over this number. It's the upside down version. And so six, and this is going up two, and six divided by two is three. Got it? Let's take a look here. What's going up from three to um, six? Three. Three. What's this going up by? Three. three. What's three divided by three? One. That's it. That's it. That your that's your change. This is another story. This I don't know if you guys remember. That number is found from whatever number is with your x value. That's coming later. But for right now, that's how you would find that change. Okay. Let's talk about this last one and then we are done. So real world examples sometimes give you a restriction on your domain, which in turn restricts your range, right? So if you're going on to Ticketmaster to buy some tickets for a concert or a basketball game or whatever, sometimes they'll say you can only purchase up to six tickets at a time. Or when there's a really good sale at a rest or at a uh, grocery store or something, it'll say limit 10. You can only buy 10, right? So they are restricting your domain. So your domain for this problem, it says you can only purchase up to six tickets and then the website shuts you down. So if your domain can only be zero, one, two, three, four, five, or six, what would your range be? Now be careful because I don't have all the way up to six on this table. So first of all, what is the price of one ticket? How much is one ticket? $15, right? Okay. Now, is there a service fee associated here? You, have you guys know that if you've ever ordered something online, like a ticket, if the ticket price says 15, but when you go to pay for it, your order's like 30 bucks or 25 bucks, is there's a service fee, right? It's a processing fee because we're going to charge you for printing this and printing that. Well, if I don't buy any tickets, I don't pay any money. So there is no service fee, which is awesome because if I buy one ticket, I pay 15. If I buy two, I pay 30 and so on. So you know right now that your new equation is y equals 15x, correct? Which means if you can purchase up to six tickets, what would your new range be? It's restricted. So my range right now is 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, and then what? Then 75 and 90. Can it be 105? No. no. So do you understand what I mean by restrictions? If you restrict the number of tickets I can buy, which is your domain, then that restricts the amount of money you can spend, which is your range. Okay? So when you are writing equations or rules for tables, you are looking for whether you're multiplying it by something or whether you're adding or subtracting something to it. And we're coming up with pretty basic equations as of right now. Okay?